After a two year absence, the mighty Iron Maiden are back with a new lineup, a new album produced by infamous six member Martin Birch, and a new video. You know, Steve rang me up and said, um, What do you think about the idea of uh, recording here with a mobile? He said, Because we all feel as though it's good. So I came over and um, it seemed to make sense. Everybody felt so comfortable playing in the room. So we did it. Just parked the mobile outside and uh, it worked great. This is all Yannick's gear here, his guitars, his stacks. Um, and we have him facing this way, opposite Dave's, with all the gear in this half of the, the barn. Basically, so we keep this, this half of the barn fairly separate from the sound that's coming out this side for Bruce's vocals, because you've got the vocal monitors in this side. And it, even though you've got this big, these big gaps here, um, having this stuff up the top here actually does separate the sound quite a bit. And that's really always the sort of sound we've tried to get on the studio albums, is a live sound. And I think this, we've achieved a lot you know, better results yeah. this time around. I think a lot of that was to do with, with, with being happy playing actually in the room. Uh, there were just a couple of minor problems, but they weren't really problems. They were just pure separation. But uh, we put the drums in the room, the main room, and uh, put the guitars outside and the bass outside so that the, there was no leakage. But I mean, apart from that, you can, you know, it was, it, was, it was good. No problems at all. Well, obviously the fact that Yannick joined uh, made a big difference as far as, like, the lead guitar playing. Yannick's more of an aggressive player, and uh, as Steve said earlier, it's, it's more of a two-pronged attack now with the guitars. In Adrian's, we, um, well, they're different guitarists. So yeah, I think Yannick's more of a natural lead guitar player. Mm. Adrian, um, when he first joined the band, um, he was used to actually being a singer frontman sort of thing, playing more rhythm and harmony guitars. And that's one of the reasons we got him in the first place, because he knew he was a, like, a good songwriter and also could do backing vocals and was really good for harmony guitars. But, um, we wanted to sort of actually get him more into lead playing, so he sort of grew into that more over the period of time. Um, it was something he sort of worked on. He wasn't really a natural lead player when he first joined. Can I play with madness? He's never tried to push us to do something we're not into, which a lot of producers tend to do or try to. Yeah, I, try, I mean, I, I get involved with the whole spirit of the thing, so I mean, I suppose I'm almost unconsciously a part of the band, as it were. Um, and I, I just go with the rest of the guys, you know, get the whole feel of it. it. There's a lot of what I would call the push button brigade that goes on. So I think a lot of the actual art of recording has gone out the window. A lot of it is, is prefabricated and, and already in, in machines, which is just push a button and it does it. Um, a, there's no need to use any of that on Iron Maiden because they're bloody good musicians. So I think that uh, accounts for that. And also try to capture the sound of the band. I mean, if I started using samples, on guitars or drums, I mean, it's going to completely destroy the original sound of, of the musician anyway. So, Nick would try you anyway, would he? Well, Nick would also uh, Nick probably beat me up. So, yeah, we do it from source. Yeah. I mean, especially as soon as you just finish an album, you can't be very totally objective about it because, you know, you need to sort of play the songs live, see how they stand up live. Also, you need to really spend a bit of time sort of listening to it like over a period of time and then going back to it and then judging it with all the other albums, you know. When you just finished it, you always think it's the best thing you've ever done because you just finished it and you're excited mm -hmm. about it. Well, I think the spirit's always been the same in all the albums, isn't it? I mean, we've, we've always gone in and just done it as we felt at the time, that's it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We felt good, that's it. Can I play with madness? No, I've always seen Maiden just as, a, you know, as a live band. I mean, um, and basically that's why we've always tried to do our videos like through the live sort of thing, but without any real acting or anything in it. Uh, the punters want to see stuff behind the, the scenes, and they, I mean, the way I tried to approach the Maiden England thing was if you if you drag ten punters out of the orders and give them a camcorder, that's the sort of feel that I wanted to get. But it's, uh, again, the reasons we did that in the early days was, you know, really to sort of get rid of uh, the fact that we had to be in them. You could use, you know, insert edits with, you know, um, all of you know, movie footage or whatever, and it just meant less time for us to actually be in acting in the videos. It's always been the way. You know, it's just trying to keep us out of them, really. Not in the sense of videos as being, like, really, um, you know, pretty, pretty and, like, all lots of, like, puffy hair blowing in the wind sort of crap, but as something that was really, like the music, really, something that was really big and dramatic and sort of, like, whoa, you know, real horror show stuff. Um, but it's a question of cash, you know. I mean, 
Uh, you can't make things like that, even on a, on a small budget, without having, a, relatively speaking, a lot of money. And um, it's always been a question of, well, who is going to show Iron Maiden videos, apart from specialist, you know, metal shows and things like that. That's your big, that's the biggest problem. Like, when we went out and we did a, a like a fully storyboarded sort of approach, and I think that one suffered from being overcomplicated. There were some nice images, but I mean, I knew what the storyboard was and I couldn't tell what the hell was going on when I sort of think edited together. Not too much, Eddie, you know, like just visual Eddie, you know, sort of for videos and stuff like that. I think it just become boring or, you know, I think it's very hard to actually, um, Recreate Eddie in a video because a lot of it's you know imagination in people's minds. Can I play with madness? And all of a sudden, you know, what started as well, we just want to have a couple of cameras to film the band playing. Suddenly, there's the bloody catering truck, and there's 30 roadies, and there's like people running around with clipboards, and you know, who are you? You know, and there's all this nonsense. And and you know, you go to talk to film people about it, and they're like, oh, you don't need all that kind of stuff. You know, they only do that because they know it's a pop group. And pop groups think that's how you have to make things like that. But it, it really isn't, you know. I mean, Steve did Holy Smoke entirely on his own um, with one camera and a little light that you stick over the top or one that you just light in the room. And there's a big field out the back here, which was full of um, uh, yellow stuff, which is called rape or something else like that, which when the sun was on, it was magnificent. It didn't need any other light other than natural light. It's got like, and basically it was just the five of us in there when we were actually making the record singing. As we were doing the performances, he was filming it, and then we were out here goofing around. Um, and, um, that can make a great video because it's real, you know. Well, the Ali Smoke video didn't actually start off um, in, in that way that we were going to do it as an actual promo for the Ali Smoke, Ali Smoke single because originally we weren't going to do Ali Smoke as the first single. We were just going to do um, that as like a, I was just doing it as, a, as another video that might have a bit of leverage, you know, for um, future use. Because um, originally we were going to use Ux in You and Daughter as the singles. And so that didn't really come into contention. I just thought I'd film it anyway, because I thought, and, and Tail Gunner as well, film some stuff on that. And it ended up being chosen as the single, so we thought, well, why not use that? So mm. that's the way it came about, really. It wasn't like we tried to do a cheap and nasty video. Um, it, just, it just worked out to be cheap and nasty, that's all.